I've published two books, and each of these have brought in multiple six figures for my business. And I've just finished the rough draft for book number three. Now, I would not have gone through all the effort to write these if these books were not so powerful. And the reason why is because, let's be honest, writing a book is not easy. But there are tricks that best-selling authors like Stephen King are using to get a lot more words on the paper with a lot less effort. And if you don't know about these tricks, writing your book is going to be 10 times harder. I have watched every YouTube video about how to write a book. I've read all the books by the writing gurus about how to make writing easier. And I've tested these methods out. And I've boiled it down to nine tips that you can use to make writing easier. If you want to get your manuscript done with half the effort and it still be amazing, these tips will light the way. And watch until the very end because I have saved the most powerful tip by far for last. Tip number one is writing blocks. Brenda Burchard used to teach a seminar called High Performance Academy. I've been to it three times. It's really good. And there he always teaches this technique of block time. And his recommendation is to set a timer for 50 minutes. As soon as the timer goes off, set another timer for five minutes and take a break. And then keep repeating that all day long. And the reason why that works is because when you take that five minute break, it's kind of like if you plugged your cell phone into the charger for five minutes every hour, the thing's going to stay charged all day long. However, if you don't take a break and you sit at your computer and try to push through for two, three hours straight, that depletes your own battery down to unrecoverable levels. Now, I've always been diagnosed with like ADD, ADHD, so I couldn't really do the 50 minute time blocks. About 30 minutes works better for me followed by a five-minute break. And it's important to know what a break looks like and what it does not. A break looks like getting up, you know, walking away from your computer, doing some stretches, taking some deep breaths, doing some push-ups or some jumping jacks, or going outside, walking around the building one time. A break does not look like staring at your phone, continuing to stare at your computer, opening up new tabs, getting on social media, or doing different work. You have to be bored during your breaks and starve your brain of dopamine so that when you return to work, you will be excited and refreshed and ready to work again. Tip number two is to embrace nonlinear creation. When I was a kid growing up, my favorite movie was Jurassic Park. And I always thought it would be cool to be one of those paleontologists who sit there and dig in the dirt and try to find dinosaur bones. And one thing that is unique about the job of a paleontologist is that they never know what they're going to dig up on any given day. Some days they might just find like a rib bone of some bird dinosaur. And then the next day they might dig up the skull of a T-Rex. It's totally unpredictable. And the way that your book is going to come out of you is also totally unpredictable. On some days, I will have a huge breakthrough in my book and like the thing will just be pouring out of me. And on other days, I might only get a tiny bit of progress made within a single chapter. And so in order to make writing easier, we have to embrace that this is the truth and just not worry about the order in which it comes out or the order in which we try to produce it. Like I'll sit down at my computer and just look at all the chapters and just write on the one that I feel like writing on. Oh, chapter eight, I can write on that for 20 minutes. And then as soon as I get bored, I'll hop over to chapter 13 and I'll spend 20 minutes on that. And just kind of bouncing around in this nonlinear way and having fun with it and letting it come out as it will. If you use the nonlinear approach to writing, it will be more fun. You'll have more energy. You'll be able to extend the length of your writing sessions as a result, and writing will be easier for you. Tip number three is to write consistently. I cannot tell you how many people I've talked to who say, Brian, 
I'm writing a book. Well, I was writing a book and it's, I haven't, you know, touched it in a while. It's sitting on a Google doc somewhere. And I know when they say that, that they're never going to finish that book. You cannot distance yourself from your book for too long. When I do that, I don't even feel like picking it back up. I don't remember where I left off. I don't have energy or excitement for it anymore. And so when I am in the middle of writing a book, I write five or six days per week for one to two hours per time consistently. That might sound like I'm very disciplined, but it actually makes it a lot easier to get the thing done when you do that. Stephen King writes every day until he writes 2,000 words. Eckhart Tolle, he's the world's top spiritual author. And he says, you know, once you're writing a book, you can't really stop because the book is flowing out of you. And if you stop, you impede the flow. So if you can't commit to writing for at least 30 minutes a day for five days a week, let's say, writing a book is going to be a lot harder for you. The more consistently you write, the easier you will be able to pull the manuscript out of your brain and onto that paper. Tip number four is to never edit while you write. Think of writing your book like birthing a baby. What do you do? Well, first you want to get the thing out and then you can clean it up, cut the cord and put clothes on. When you're writing your book, let it out, let it flow. Don't stop that flow because you want to go back and reread everything and try to make it perfect, correct your grammar and your punctuation. That's going from creator mode to cleanup mode. And as soon as you make that switch, the flow becomes blocked and you have entered a different state from which is hard to return. Tip number five is to get a mechanical keyboard. When I was writing my last book, I was writing it on my MacBook and I noticed that my hands would kind of ache a little bit towards the end of the writing sessions. So I decided to Google, you know, what are the best keyboards for typing? And I didn't know this, but all the best keyboards are what are called mechanical keyboards. Mechanical means each key has a switch under it and they are so much easier to type on. I've got a higher word per minute typing speed when I use this and my hands don't hurt. This is the Royal Kludge keyboard. It was one of the top rated keyboards for typing. It was like $45. I will link to the Amazon listing in the description if you want to check it out. Trying to write an entire book on a laptop is kind of like trying to go mountain biking with a road bike. You can do it, but it's harder. The keyboard is the tool that connects the writer, you and your brain and your hands, with the screen where the words end up. So it makes sense to make this as comfortable as possible so you can become a more efficient writer. Tip number six is to dictate your book. Dictate means to speak your book. So in other words, you pull up your voice memo app on your phone and go for a walk in the park or whatever and speak your book into your phone, record it. A lot of people will use an outline and they will just riff and just talk freely about the topic. And then they will send that audio file to someone who can transcribe it, or you can use a transcription service. I like rev.com. I will link that one in the description for you as well. Now, I'll be honest, this is something I tried, but I didn't really like. I found that cleaning up a transcribed version was pretty messy, and I like to just write it from scratch. However, Brian Tracy dictates all of his books, and he writes multiple books per year, he has like 50 or 60 of his books are best sellers. So just because it doesn't work for me does not mean it won't work for you. I either did it wrong or it's just not a good fit for me. But if you hate the idea of writing, dictation might be a lifesaver for you. If you go this route, I expect there will be a higher amount of editing in the end. That's the price you pay for making it easier by speaking your book in the first place. Tip number seven is to get an accountability partner. The reason why accountability works is because we are social creatures and we don't want to give someone our word and then let them down or come off as a person who can't keep their word. And because we have that motivation, we will keep our word. And if you know someone else who's writing a book, 
that is the perfect person to have as your accountability partner. You could set weekly word count goals or just check in with each other each day. Hey, did you do your writing session today or not? Having an accountability partner has helped me in so many different times where I've tried to develop a new habit in my life and it will work for you as well. I recently got an accountability partner when I was trying to pick up a morning meditation routine and we texted each other every morning for three months, said, hey, I did my meditation this morning and that worked like a charm. I never missed a day just because I knew my buddy was waiting on that text message. If I hadn't had him, I probably would have skipped most of the days and fell off like a week into it. But because I had him, I did it every day for three months straight. And then I no longer needed him anymore because the habit was cemented. All right, we've arrived at the best and last tip. Tip number eight is to learn how to get into flow state. All right, tell me if this has ever happened to you. Have you ever been writing at your computer and all of a sudden the background behind you blurs a little bit and you feel really locked in the present moment and the words that you're typing feel like they're almost pouring out of you and there's not a lot of effort required on your part to make it happen. If so, then you have experienced what is called flow state. Michael Jordan learned how to get in flow state through working with a meditation teacher and attributes a lot of his success on the court to being locked into the present moment while he was playing. And even though we're not pro athletes, we can learn to harness the power of flow state while we're sitting at the coffee shop working on our book. In fact, this is the one thing that will affect your ability to produce high quality creative work more than anything else. Now, learning how to get into flow state, it's pretty similar to a topic you might have already heard before called mindfulness. Mindfulness is just a commitment to live in the present moment. So you wake up and you say, today, my goal is to be present. I'm going to go and do what I have to do, but my underlying main priority is to be present while doing it. Sometimes when I'm writing, in order to stay in the present moment, I will pay attention to my inner body. So you can actually, if you close your eyes, you can feel that your hands are there, that your feet are there without looking at them. That's called inner body awareness. And you can actually feel that sense of your inner body everywhere in your body and do it while you are writing. I know this sounds a little woo woo, but this is about transforming on the inside so that your writing transforms on the outside. Another thing you can do is just be conscious of your breathing while you're writing. It's a big ask. It's hard enough to meditate and sit on a cushion and close your eyes and be conscious of your breathing. But if you can learn to do that while you're sitting in front of the keyboard writing, you will start to unlock flow state more frequently, which will exponentially increase your ability for creative work. Humans have somewhere between 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day that run through their head. And what's worse is that most of them are negative and repetitive. And so you can see how that is going to get in your way of being an artist and a creator, which is basically what you are. And so transforming on the inside is the best way to make better work on the outside. So just think of flow state as mindfulness, but applied to the task of writing. If you can learn how to do that, your writing will exponentially get better. It will flow out with a lot less effort and you will become a prolific writer who gets their manuscript done at a fraction of the effort that it takes the next person. All right, those are my top eight tips to help you make your writing easier so you can get that book done with less effort. Lastly, I'll tell you that when your book's done, what you're usually not told is that you gotta be able to sell a decent amount of copies, especially if you wanna live off book royalties, but even if you want to get clients from your books, like I do, 
And the best way to do that is to have already built an audience online, to have built a personal brand that you can then market the book to when it's ready versus just hiding away and writing your book and then trying to tell everyone about it when you haven't been posting, nobody knows who you are. If you want to learn how to build a personal brand and ramp up your online presence in the creator economy, I've created a step-by-step guide on how to do that right here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Smash the subscribe button if you found this valuable and I will see you next time.